My name is Marcos, and I'm from India. I thank God for your ministry, and I have watched many of your videos on YouTube, and I thank God for your love for our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My only difference of opinion with you is that you very strongly proclaim that baptism should be in the name of Jesus only. I have listened in many places you strongly stand for the Word of God and say we should not change anything written in the Bible. So Jesus himself said in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So I request you to believe the words of Jesus Christ, and there is no explanation is required to believe Jesus. Regards. You state here that your only difference of opinion is that I strongly proclaim that baptism should be in the name of Jesus only. Okay, let's just go ahead and take a look at this scripture here. And just to let you know, this is the Word of God. Matthew 28, 19 is the Word of God. I do not take away from it. I do not add to it. It states, Go there, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, not names, name, singular, of the Father. What is the name of the Father? In Isaiah 9, 6, what is the name of the Father? I'll leave, I'll leave that for you to search out on your own and do, do some harm, homework. Many of the listeners here have already done their homework. They've listened to the teachings countless of times, and they can answer that question very easily. What is the name of the Father? Okay, secondly, and of the Son. What is the name of the Son? Friend, Marcosi from India. What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Son of God? I'll leave that question for you to do your homework on, and you can reply back to me through another letter. And of the Holy Ghost. Marcosi, from India, what is the name of the Holy Ghost? Jesus gave us the answer prior to his death and his ascension. So I'll leave that for you as well to do your homework on. Get back to me, write me another letter with the answer. Okay, I'll, I'll lead you to another area. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. They said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay, so they are pierced in the heart. They hear the sermon. They hear Peter preaching on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2. So they're convicted. Like when you and I heard the gospel, it was something that just wrenched us to, to understand that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would actually die for us and offer us salvation. It was, a, it was a piercing to our heart, the gratitude and the love that he bestowed upon us. And we had to respond some way or another, and that was through repentance. We cried out to God for mercy. We believed the gospel, right? So notice what they say. They say unto Peter and the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And you go to the very next verse. And Peter, a disciple of Jesus Christ, who was there during the time Jesus spoke to them in Matthew 28, 19, he was present. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. He doesn't say be baptized in titles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, those titles are wrapped up in a name, singular, like we read in Matthew 28, 19. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So Peter goes right to the point and fulfills Matthew 28, 19, and he advises them or commands them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the name of the Father, that is the name of the Son, that is the name of the Holy Ghost. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Now let's turn to Acts chapter 8. Notice how this baptism took place. Verse 14, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Notice this. Here, here you want to take a look at this, Marcosi. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Who is the Lord Jesus? The Lord Jesus is Jesus Christ. They were baptized into Jesus Christ. Now let's take a look at another passage in Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And we can, we, can, we can teach on that, that little word there, since, but we'll save that for another day. But that's a very powerful word. Since ye believed. And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto him, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So he's beginning to break it down to them, the necessity of baptism in the proper name. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Baptism has been done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Nothing has been taken away from that scripture. All these baptisms that we have been looking at have been in accordance with Matthew 28, 19. Baptizing them in the name, singular, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We don't change that. We don't take words out. We don't add to that. We just fulfill that command that Jesus gave us. We baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12 There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's at the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Galatians, As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We don't see any reference to baptism in titles in the book of Acts. Nowhere. We do not find any references to baptism in titles. Okay, Marcosi, listen up. Baptism in titles and erasing or deleting the name of Jesus Christ came from the Roman Catholic Church in the late 3rd century A.D. It's probably a good idea for you to take a look at the description box and look at a teaching that we made entitled History Bears Record. And you can see for yourself how those in the Catholic Church substituted the name of Jesus, took out the name of Jesus, substituted it with Father, Son, Holy Ghost, invocation or proclamation over the baptizees, rather than the name of Jesus Christ. That was done by the Roman Catholic Church. They didn't baptize the way the apostles baptized. They baptized a different way. They literally took out the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why they're, they're an idolatry. That's why they worship Mary. That's why they pray to dead saints. That's why they, they break the commands of God. The Roman Catholic Church, they're headed to perdition unless they repent from their idolatries. If you write a check to me and I go to the bank to cash it, they want to see your signature. They want to see that your name is on that check. You can't just entitle that check, friend of Gabriel. <laughs> They're going to give the check right back to me and they're going to ask for a proper signature, a proper name. And likewise with baptism. A proper baptism is done in the only name that saves. What is the only name that saves, Marcosi? I'll take you to another passage here before we wrap this up. In Acts chapter 22, after Paul or Saul had his eyes opened and he was to be a witness to the Gentiles 
Ananias lays his hands upon him. The scales fall off of his eyes. He begins to see again. And he prophesies unto him that thou shalt be a witness, verse 15, unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And verse 16, And now why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus Christ. And we'll conclude this with the scripture in Matthew one twenty one, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall what? Save his people from their sins. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of what? Sins. Arise, why tarriest thou? Be baptized. Wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus Christ. That is why we baptize according to the way we are instructed to baptize. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And how is that done? When we bury a body in a watery grave in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Listen, Marcosi, I too was baptized in titles when I first came into the faith. I didn't know any better. And when I went down in titles, something in my spirit, something cried out and said, why wasn't the name of Jesus Christ proclaimed over you? And as I came out of the water, there was an uneasiness in my soul. And by the grace of God, a few weeks later, God extended mercy to me and led another brother, a uh, brother my way, who was able to witness to me the truth about baptism. Actually, he gave me a tape. He said, listen to this very kindly. And he gave me this tape and I listened to it the same night. It was, it was a, a tape on baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And I was never the same after that. The very next day I was baptized officially, correctly, in the only name that saves, Jesus Christ. All my sins were washed away. And he shall save his people from their sins. Who is the he? Jesus Christ. It's the only name that saves, Acts 4.12. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And that is what we do. We follow the way it was done in the first century church. The apostles did it the way it is to be done. And that is how we do it. So we don't make any apologies for baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus said, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer hate and persecution from people because they hate my name. We understand that the persecution will come because we follow the name of Jesus Christ. We preach the name of Jesus. We teach the name of Jesus. And our Lord already warned us in Matthew 10, 22, it states, and ye shall be hated of all men for what my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. It's because of the name of Jesus Christ that we will be hated, that we will be slandered, that we will be cursed, that we will be persecuted because we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. We preach the name of Jesus Christ. We follow the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people hate us for it, and they'll hate you for it. But we thank God that it's already been prophesied. It's because of the name of Jesus Christ that we'll be persecuted, but we'll be saved in the end. We'll be saved if we endure the persecution. You baptize in titles, no problem. You baptize in Jesus Christ, much problem. So Marcosi, I'm going to end this by an invitation to you. You can receive the forgiveness of sins and have your sins washed away if you would renounce the false teachings that you've been taught. 
that, as I stated, that stem from the Roman Catholic Church in the late 3rd century A.D., even prior to that, it began to manifest in small ways and then it was uh, officiated or official through Constantinople. You can research, you can see history for yourself. You can have your sins washed away if you come to this understanding, if you're willing to have ears to hear, like I was when a brother shared it with me. I didn't put up a fight. I knew in my soul that something was wrong after I came up from the water when they baptized me in titles. I knew something was missing because I had a hunger for God. I had a, a strong desire. I loved God. And I wanted all that I could receive from the Lord. That's why God filled me with the Holy Ghost before I was baptized. He's seen my faith like those in Acts chapter 10. After Peter preached the word, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. They believe the word of God. And that's what God responds to. He responds to faith. So even though the Lord baptized me with the Spirit, I still needed to get baptized. It's, it's in Acts chapter 10. Peter commanded them to be baptized after they received the Holy Ghost. Proper baptism is, is essential. It's a beautiful thing. Why, why would you fight it? <laughs> why would you fight being baptized in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Why would you come against a brother who's preaching Jesus Christ, baptism? What, what motivates you to do that? It's not God. It's not God's Spirit. That's the Spirit of the Antichrist. He opposes all that is God. He hates Jesus Christ. He hates the washing away of sins. He hates the remission of sins. I don't get tired of preaching Jesus Christ. I get invigorated by preaching Jesus Christ. So reach out to me once again. Answer the questions in the first part of this teaching. and Send me another letter and we'll go from there. I pray God gives you ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto you and to others, many others as well. This is just not picking on you, Marcosi. This is for other people as well. There are many out there that are still not abiding in the truth. But I thank God that God has opened the eyes of many people through this ministry by the grace of God. Many rebaptisms, many official baptisms, many people baptized for the first time in the only name that saves, and that's Jesus Christ. Many people came to this understanding through the teaching. That's not something that I do and I snap my fingers and you magically understand. No. Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, Peter, but my Father which is in heaven. This is something that the Father has to give you, this understanding. And it was given to me, as I stated initially, the uneasiness in my soul when I came out of the water and, and the internal voice that said, why wasn't the name of Jesus Christ proclaimed over you? And then God leading a, a brother my way and sharing with me a tape about baptism in Jesus' name. And after me listening to that tape, I was pierced. And the next day I was baptized officially in the only name that saves. That's in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And that was in 1996. June 1996. When you're truly baptized correctly and officially, you won't forget that date. It's branded in your soul. I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you and to many others, and may you go in peace. Until next time, in Jesus' name, amen.